now with Congressman Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, and Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who flew in the Air Force as a pilot in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Uh, Congressman Schiff, I want to start with you, though, on the attacks overnight in Copenhagen. Is there any indication that you are hearing that this is tied in any way to ISIS or to al-Qaeda? Intelligence community is telling me at this point we still don't know. Well, obviously, they're working with Danish authorities to try to get to the bottom of was there an affiliation with al-Qaeda or ISIS? Was this self-radicalization? Was this a copycat of what happened in Paris? But it's still too early to tell. All right, let's, let's get to the debate on this war resolution. This is a fascinating debate because, first of all, Adam Schiff, you are a Democrat. You want to give the president less options. You want to tie his hands a little bit more. You, Congressman Kinzinger, you are a Republican. You want to give him more options. Uh, so what I want to ask both of you, though, look at this debate. What is at stake if Congress takes this up and fails to pass this resolution? What does it say to the rest of the world? Well, it says uh, that the Congress can't get its act together, for one thing. And it also says to future presidents that uh, Congress is basically an historical anachronism in terms of its power to declare war, that we're no longer relevant in that debate. Uh, we should have never taken six months to take this up. Uh, it is finally happening. I think it's very important that we find a way to get to yes uh, on an authorization. But I also think it's very important that we not write another blank check. We did that 14 years ago with the 2001 authorization. Uh, and that authorization continues in force under the president's proposal. Uh, and that's very worrying to a lot of Democrats because it means that when the new one expires, the next president can simply rely on this old authorization and say that gives me the authority to go after whoever I want, wherever I want, in any way I want. But, but Congressman Kinzinger, you say that this ties the president's hands. I think it ties the president's hands. It also is making Congress, in essence, part of the president's limited strategy. The president, I've been critical to say he needs, you know, more airstrikes, probably embed some special operations on the ground to push back um, ISIS. But at the end of the day, you have to say this. Look, the existence of ISIS is the worst thing, or the existence of American ground combat operations is the worst thing. And what this, what his draft resolution would do, is say we need to destroy ISIS to a point, unless it takes enduring offensive operations, whatever that means, uh, then in which case uh, we just don't have the authority to do it. The, the job of Congress, and, and Adam said it, is to uh, declare war. It's not to be commander in chief. And this authorization, as the president put out, would be, in essence, Congress being commander in chief and making strategic decisions. But, but Congress, if you're worried about this opening the door to ground troops, why don't you believe the president when he says over and over again, we are not going to have another ground war in the Middle East? Well, that's what this president believes, and I do believe this president is determined not to occupy another country as we did earlier in Iraq and as we have done in Afghanistan. But this authorization goes beyond the term of this president. We don't know who the next president will be or what their intentions will be. And the problem with writing something so broad that has no sunset date, no geographic limitation, and no but meaningful... But it has a three-year... Well, a three this one does, but my colleague and others are advocating for no sunset date, is that we could find ourselves 14 years from now, and we're 14 years from when we passed the last uh, authorization, uh, in 2029, with a president going into a country where there's no terrorism today against a group that doesn't exist today, uh, and relying on the authorization we passed today. Uh, and I don't think we want to make the mistake we made in the past of giving that kind of broad authorization. The, right. the problem with arguing that we tell our enemies what we're going to do uh, is that we're not telling the American people what we're going to so, do. So I want to ask you quickly before we go, the president gave this interview to Vox where he suggested that climate change is a greater threat than terrorism. Do, do, you, do you agree with that? Start with you, Congressman Schiff. Well, I wouldn't agree that it's the more immediate threat. It's certainly a threat to our planet, and it's one we have to deal with, and we don't know where the tipping point is. Uh, but it's such a very different problem, I'm not sure I put them in the same sentence. I agree. It's very different problems. Uh, we're facing ISIS and al-Qaeda today, which is a, a very big threat to us. And let me just say, last, you said it in the opening segment uh, coming in, this would be the first time Congress would place limits on the commander-in-chief's ability to be commander-in-chief. We don't own his limited strategy. The president has to make that decision, which is why I think he needs the broad power to do what the commander-in-chief does. Okay. Thank you both for joining us. The Roundtable will be joining us in a moment.